Hey, how's it going? So in this video, I'm going to talk about client project number two, what I learned in terms of web development, in terms of project management, the mistakes that I made, that kind of thing. I was still learning at this point. So in terms of project management, I didn't really have an approach. I was just finding my way. So when they approached me, this is what their website looked like. And I took it from this eventually took it to this. So first of all, let's talk about how I, how I won the project. Well, it was pretty simple. It's advice that you've most probably heard already. I put a message out on Facebook. I said, hey, I'm moving into doing web development full time now. Over the years, I'd generated a network from doing personal training. I was a fitness instructor. Then I moved into life coaching. Then I did some therapy. I got a message the next day. Hey, Mike, we'd be interested in working with you. Here's the number to call. Speak to the receptionist and we'll get things going. And so that's how, how I want it. And that's how it got started. I got onto the call with them. Now, during that call, I, I didn't really know about, should you set a fixed price or should you charge hourly? I just, I went with hourly and I said, look, I'm, I'll charge hourly. This is my rate, but I'll cap it at this much. So I won't allow the project to go beyond this much. That's not the way I would approach it now. I would either go with a fixed price. I tend to go for a fixed price on projects and I go with hourly when it comes to maintenance and adding on extra features. I didn't have a contract, which I was a little anxious about, but I didn't have time. I was researching how to get a contract together, but I, I had to produce some mock-ups. So here's how I did it. I said, I'm going to present you some mock-ups. Once you're happy with the home page and the style and the colors and how it's laid out, then I'll ask for the deposit and I'll ask for the remainder once the project is complete. I wouldn't do that now. It's a deposit up front or I don't begin any work. So let's talk about the design. As you can see, everything is pushed above the fold. Before, if you like, if you go before 2010, there was it began to die out after that once we had access to a lot of user experience uh, statistics, having watched hundreds of thousands of hours of people using websites. But before 2010, there was this obsession with pushing everything above the fold. So that was my first thing. And I explained that on the initial kickoff meeting. I said, look, everything's crammed above the fold. We need to simplify this and let the content breathe and push what is most important. Don't give, ev don't give the visitor too many options. What you're looking at here, I learned this from Mike Locke. If you don't know Mike Locke, go check the guy out. This is his YouTube channel and that's who I learned from. So, and, and what I learned from Mike is a well-designed website is all about good photography, number one, and good typography. So the homepage, it's all about the hero image. I used the idea of having a different font for your header text and you contrast that with a different font for your body content. Now, the other thing I learned, and I'm going to go to the actual live site now, it's changed a lot over the years. But if you look at these, it, it's a panel design. So this is one panel. Then we change to a different color. There's another panel. So the content is split up into rows with a different colored background. And it's very subtle. And that's something I picked up from Mike. If you look at this background, it's not 100% white. It's a little bit gray and it just adds a little bit of elegance 
to it. So, and the other panel is, it's not like completely grey, there's actually a little bit of blue coming in there, a little bit of sky blue, which goes with the hero image. And then if we go all the way down to the footer, we've got a nice contrasting colour for the footer. And I actually I just didn't come up with these colours by myself. I played around with the Adobe Colour app, which I spoke about in a previous video. I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the video description. So here I was learning my craft and this is a WordPress theme, but the, now I make custom websites. I don't always go with WordPress unless the client insists that they and their team need to be able to log into it very easily and make little edits. If that's the case, then I build it with a CMS. But I build custom websites also, and I learned how to lay out the structure of my HTML and my content through using this theme. It's an elegant theme, uh, elegantthemes.com. And if you look, uh, let me give you an example. So this chunk of content here, and I've got the developer tools open here to demonstrate this. So here's the, the what we could call the wrapper, and then inside of it, we've got rows. So this is a section, and inside of it, we've got these rows. So I was learning how to lay it out when, when to use margins and when to use padding. So it was very valuable. The other thing I remember from this project is cutting out the uh, image of the team and laying it out on a background. When I was first learning Photoshop, I got really excited about cutting out my profile picture and putting it on an infinity white background. Infinity white backgrounds were the rage uh, a few years ago, not so much now. Um, but little did I know that I would later use that in my projects. And I've used this uh, little technique in other projects as well, which you will see in future videos. Let's talk about some of the mistakes, and I made some horrible mistakes in the beginning, and I touched on that on the last video. So let me just show you the rookie mistake that I made. And it goes to what I said about when I created buttons using pictures, using images, rather than doing it programmatically. Look at this hero image, and now I can uh, select this element here. So this is an element with a simple uh, background, a transparent background with border radius. Uh, so how did I produce this the first time round? I had an image for the background and then I created a grey image and tried to fit the text in there somehow. Um, now some of you will have picked on, on picked up on this right away and you know why that's a bad idea. Uh, if you don't, the reason why it's a bad idea is supposing the text changes. Then you've got to change the grey box behind it and then if they want to change it again and it's just, you just get into a really big mess. Um, so that's one rookie mistake. The other mistake is I wasn't entirely clued up on UX design. UX is very important and context is very important. You need to be thinking about that when you're coming up with designs. UX trumps pretty design. Why is that so? Well, take for example the context of someone who's coming to a dentist website. They could be coming to this website in a considerable amount of pain. They're most probably in a bit of a hurry. They need to get to the phone number. They need the contact details, especially if they're on the phone. You don't want to have them having to scroll down. Okay, where's the number? Is it at the bottom? I don't know. Do I have time for this? So user experience trumps pretty design. And at the time I didn't want to be like, 
I didn't want to be having the number at the top and having like a really thick bar at the top but I've corrected that now that I've clued up myself on the basics of UX design. So the other mistake I made is allowing the last developer to keep a hold of the domain name. And I kind of touched on that on the last video. Allow the client, the client is the business owner. They should have ownership of their own domain name, okay? The domain name should be registered in the business owner's name. If you want to host the site, sure, go ahead. But make sure they've got the domain name. That wasn't the case. The old developer, he had the domain name, the hosting, the email. And so when I wanted to set up the site on a VPS, um, it, it just caused problems because when I needed to access the DNS settings, I had to get a hold of him and he wasn't the easiest person to get a hold of. They had their own uh, reasons for swapping developers, let's just say that. So uh, that's another thing. I should have, from the get-go, had the domain. Eventually we had it transferred over to them, uh, but I should have done that from the, from the get-go. The other thing is, the other mistake, uh, the other, the other realisation is CMSs, in particular WordPress, requires maintenance. Now, it's easier to get the client on board with the fact that it needs maintenance. It's easier to do that at the beginning of the project than further down the line, okay? It's not going to work out if further down the line you say, hey, actually, uh, this requires some maintenance. Now, fortunately for me, this is something that became more apparent further down the line uh, with this particular client. They were quite happy for me to do uh, maintenance if and when needed rather than me setting them up on a monthly retainer, um, which actually I, I have an example of what I can show you. This is my maintenance page. This is the page that I refer clients to when I say, hey, um, okay, we're, so we're gonna build it with WordPress that best suits your needs. I have a maintenance package. You can go to this website and uh, go check out uh, what you get with that. Ask me any questions you may have, um, that, that kind of thing. So, the other thing I run into in terms of project management is, and there's different approaches to this, but I produced the site and I showed it to one receptionist and then I went away, I did some more work, showed it to another member of the team. And this particular member of the team decided that they were all of a sudden a, a design expert and they wanted me to change the text to green because they felt it was more zen and they felt that it would accentuate the, the zen atmosphere of the practice. And I'm not talking about them wanting me to just change the header. Now I'm talking candidly about this because this person has long since left the practice. Uh, but they didn't just want me to change the header into green. I'm talking the body content. They want it to be bright green. And this is something that you may come up against. And you don't take it personally would be my advice. Stand up for yourself. I st stood up for myself. I said, you know, that's not the right approach to creating content that's easily, it's going to be easily consumed. Uh, and they backed off and they said... They owned, they owned it, they said, yeah, I'm trying to play designer, uh, and it was fine. Your relationship with your clients will go on from, it doesn't stop once you've built the site, okay? There's maintenance involved, things change, they want to add new things to it, they're going to ask you about SEO and um, that kind of thing. So I eventually would build an iOS app. Uh, did some leaflet design for them. I actually met them in person, which is a whole story in and of itself. So I won't go into that though on this video. I'll talk about that in a future video because that has its own learning points and what have you. This one's gone on long enough, I think. So I'll leave it there. We're going to get through at least five of these. So anyhow, I'll leave it there. I'll catch you later. Peace.